Good morning to those who are listening online. This is Sam Rager with the authority. Um, Mayor Johnson, one of our board members online, can you hear us okay? And you're on mute, Mayor. Sam, I can hear you fine. This is Curtis Blair. I can hear you now. This is Mark Johnson. I can hear you, Mayor, but I can see the mic recording. You're talking to us just a second to check on this. Still problem solving here. Um, Jamie Barnes for FSL online. Can you chime in? If we you can hear us, I can't hear anybody online yet. We can hear you guys. Let's see, uh, let's see Lisa Shepard, you're attending online from our board. Can you turn on your mic and comment? Let's see if you can hear our online board members. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you guys. So give me just a moment. We're going to take a quick question. We'll get that corrected before we get started. Let's see, it's just a minute here to get started. We're having some new IT kind of help with getting the volume set. We'd like to build your online on board. First, we have a few of mine listening in. Thanks for your patience. Meeting for IT, I tried a DIY solution. Mayor Johnson, can you try and call it again? Can you hear us yet? So Mayor Johnson, Curtis Blair here. I'm dialing in remotely too, and I can hear you just fine. Yeah, I can hear everybody who's online. We just can't 
or I guess they just can't hear us. They can't hear us. Okay. Yes, we do. What do we hear? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I mean, we understand there are a few issues online, so we apologize for that. I think the best way to do a workaround is those that are online that are members, if you wouldn't mind typing in the chat your vote or your comment, and Sam's going to just keep a really close eye. Is this you, Sam, that will be watching it? Yeah, we've got a couple yeah, people, actually. Perfect. Great, we've got eyes all over to watch to make sure we catch your um, questions and catch your votes. So uh, welcome to the Utah Lake Authority um, meeting. We're so excited. Today is April 3rd. Uh, it is 9-11, and this meeting is scheduled for two hours, but with all the prayers above, I'm hoping we don't have to use two hours. But we've got the time that we need it. Uh, right off, I would like to introduce myself. I am the presiding board member, Chair Michelle Cabrusi, and my vice chair is Mayor Carolyn Lumber from Linden. I thought it would be nice to just go around and start maybe over here with our Commissioner Sakovich and have everyone just introduce yourselves and who you represent. So, Commissioner? Uh, Tom Sakovich from Utah County. Uh, Lene Millet from Orange City. Carolyn Lumber, Linden City. Chris Conn, Sarah Jones, Spring City. Marty Larson, and Genola. John Mackey, Utah Division of Water Quality. Cameron Dalton, Governor's Office. 
Mike McKelly has that center. Real quick, I understand we're, about, we're trying to do IT at the same time out there here. Uh, one of our board members on can you hear the various board members doing introductions? Can someone respond to that? Yes, Sam, can you hear us? So we can't hear that. Yeah, I Curtis, will you type in the chat? Yes, you can hear us, or somebody, if you can hear us. Hey, I'm not sure chat is enabled. That is correct. Chat is not enabled. I'm hearing it right here. Right now. Curtis, I could faintly hear you, so we're, we're glad we're solving here. Thank you for the help. You bet. Chat is not enabled on our um, recorded app right now, but um, we can hear you just fine. Curtis, I don't know if they heard that. Yeah, I, you might be right. Maybe what we need to do is just text one of them and tell them that we'll respond. We'll vote in the reactions by just giving them a thumbs up when we when the vote's called for. Mayor, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Can, you, can you comment again? We're just seeing if we get the audio on our end. I've got Luke that I'm texting right now. I'll let him know that we'll do thumbs up and let our yeah. and our cameras on. Okay. Representative Brammer, I really like your background. That's pretty high tech. <laughs> Thanks. It's it's actually the real background behind me. It's just some little PBC wall panels I can put up behind you. Yeah, that, I just think they look cool. Oh, thanks. Testing, testing, test, test, anything? British, you're still needed. Or Mayor Johnson, yeah. what did you do? Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Can you hear us at all? I'm gonna see if we can get that enabled so they can utilize that. We thought we had to turn on, it's not on the corner. But I think it did plug in this, if we just try and proceed, if we can get the chat function working, so we can have a meeting, we just do Oh, one more moment. Okay. The mayor and me, I mean, I'm looking at my deputy mayor, and he's like, she's dying. I'd like to run it efficient, <laughs> good <laughs> me. <laughs> but those things happen. Those things happen. The good thing is, the next meeting will be at the Rebel City Airport, and I will make sure that our IT is up and functioning at the promise. That one I do have a little control over, so I'll make sure we're up and running and functioning. Okay. Apologies, I'm up and This is not a typical meeting you've been here before. Um, it looks like I can't turn on chat without kicking everybody out of me. I don't want to do that, but we do have reactions turned on, so board members can raise their hand 
in Zoom, and that way there is a screen display will show the accounts from each board member okay. as they vote for it. Will that work, Chair? Does everyone feel okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And our apologies to the board members online. We value your input. We're sorry that it's uh, not a work that's working this time. But again, for board members who are online, use the reactions button at the bottom and raise your hand to indicate your vote in support of uh, the action items and consent items on the agenda. And if you do have a particular comment, feel free to text Luke or I on any of the, the topics. We can make sure that's included in the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And thank you to everyone that's in the audience for coming out this morning. We really appreciate your attendance. All right, we thought we'd start with something kind of fun and different. I would like to introduce this new idea of welcoming everyone and then an inspirational thought. And so, uh, Council Member Lene Miller from Borham is going to do that for us. So, I'll turn the time to Lene. Wonderful, thank you. Mayor. Um, a couple of summers ago, I was invited to go sailing on Utah Lake. I was able to learn about and experience the unique diversity and beauty of Utah Lake. I've always enjoyed the lake's scenic beauty, but this was an up-close and educational experience. I learned of the different species in around the lake, the benefits of the lake, and importantly, different perspectives and ideas for the future of the lake. There are many who appreciate Utah Lake in many different ways. The Utah Lake Authority has the privilege and the challenge of managing this incredible resource. We have the responsibilities to, of gathering information and listening to perspectives, ideas, and data. Decisions matter, and in the coming months and years, I anticipate that our community will do many things to strengthen and to protect Utah Lake. Those of us on this board will work to collaborate and to unify behind solutions. You know, we often talk about collaboration and unity, which are important words. However, I'd like to add a new word to contemplate, and that word is dignity. Maintaining an atmosphere of dignity during this process is vital. One definition of dignity that I really like states that dignity is the glue that holds all of our relationships together. Everyone has the right to human dignity, which involves kindness, respect, and reverence for them as a person of good intent. Dignity is desired by all. As ideas are discussed and vetted, a foundation of dignity will create uplifting and collaborative discussions and bring the resulting best outcomes. Even when disagreeing, and may I say especially when disagreeing, as we listen, seek to understand, seek truth from the source, seek to be kind, and seek to live the golden rule, we should also be seeking to maintain dignity, our dignity and the dignity of those with whom we disagree. As our board, our community members, and others seek to guide the future of Utah Lake, may I ask and urge that everyone lead out with dignity. I know as we do, we will emerge with winning solutions, and Utah Lake and its shoreline will be a place to be appreciated and enjoyed. It will be a place that connects our communities, and that's what we're all here to do, to provide a positive future for Utah Lake, to connect our communities with dignity. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you, Board Member Mel. We appreciate it. So just so everyone kind of knows, I'll probably ask someone different for our next meeting, but I love it, and I love that we're talking about experiences on Utah Lake. For beautiful Utah Lake. All right, let's go to item number two. Uh, are there any board member reports or disclosures, disclosures or recusals from the board today that we need to be made aware of? Any online, Sam? No. Okay, great. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. To item number three, which is public comment. So public comment, we love the public being here and we want you to feel like you have a voice. We are, our public comment works like this. There is a microphone right over there. And if you would like to speak, we allow two minutes. And we just ask you to make, to state your name and the city you're from. So we'll open that up now and feel free to go up there and state your name and city. My name is Jake Foldaway, and uh, it's spring, 
and spring represents new beginnings. And uh, as I look at the new group, I'm excited. Um, I think I think fall and I think a lot of people. I, I just wanted to come and say um, it was wonderful to host many of the members in our in my home uh, this past couple months. That those that came and got to know me and. Um, there's been a lot of transition from the original Wakara Way idea that was started four or five years ago. Um, the entire county commission has changed. Mayor Brums is no longer here, new executive director. And um, I just think it's a new beginning. I saw, I wanted to thank Brady Grammer and Mike McHale for running a bill this last session. I thought it showed a lot of character. And I just want to say that um, I walk our way. I went out there this morning and I saw two pair of sandhill cranes out there. I saw the ducks and geese that have never been there for since the 1970s. And uh, though we had some disagreements the past three years, um, with uh, you know past couple of months, uh, the walk our way studies and, and the grazing program stayed the same. And I just want um, to solve this problem. And I just wanted to, to come here today and just say, let's work together. There's other landowners that I've been working with and set up meetings with uh, um, Ben Steyerman that also see the value and study out what to walk our way, principles, the scientific principles that we follow. And I, I don't speak for them, but I do want to uh, extend a new welcome to anyone that would like to come and meet. And let, let's just solve this problem. So I'm excited. Thank you, Jake. Um, I think I have been with Jake from our very first meeting five, like you stated, five or six years ago. So we're excited and looking forward to getting this project and looking forward to moving forward with it. It is so beautiful down there. So how lucky are you that you get to just walk out your backyard and uh, uh, that's fantastic. All right. Does anybody else have any public comment? Here. I'm not making a public comment, but I realize since the public can't make a comment vocally online, and you don't probably have my cell phone to text me, <laughs> if you do have a public comment online that you wanted to make today, please send it in an email to Sam at utahlink.gov. We'd like to make sure the board can get those. If you did want to make a comment online, we're so sorry that we've had some technical glitches, but I want to make sure we have those. So Sam at utahlink.gov. Please feel free to send us a public comment if you were online today and hoping to make. Thank you, Sam. That's a good catch. All right, let's go ahead and move on then to item number four, which is consent items. Um, it's 4.1 that approval of the January 24, 2024 ULA board meeting minutes, and 4.2 approved January and February 2024 monthly ULA budget reports. We thought we'd just make a motion and do these two together. So I am looking to entertain a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve consent to item 4.1 and 4.2. Thank you. We have a motion. No, Sackovich, I'm happy to second that. Okay. Board member Sackovich, make a second. Is there any discussion over these two consent items? All right, seeing none, let's call it to a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. And online, are we good? And any opposed? Great, the motion carries, thank you. Let's move on now to item number five, which is staff and committee reports. Um, our first item, 5.1, is going to be presented by Abby Valdez, but she had done the so we're gonna we're going to surpass her and give the others, and then she'll be here in time to do it. Uh, so let's move to item 5.2, communications and outreach. And we will have Anna Hall present this. So thank you, Anna. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Anna Hall. Um, I started at ULA about two months ago, and so far I am loving it. Um, I am the um, outreach coordinator, and um, Oh, anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, one of my main responsibilities is social media, and I've just been um, working a lot on that with um, like creating like, constant, um, like a um, 
consistent content and um, putting up our feeds people are following and we were interacting with and also we have um, moved on to a scheduling and analytics platform. Really, it's pretty good. Um, and then field trips, I'm so excited for those this year. We have almost 1,400 students coming over our four days of field trips from all the way up in what's the north is north and north of where we go. Saratoga? We had Saratoga all the way down to the other end. Yeah, Jordan's the same place. Yeah, that's just new. We've got to you know, <laughs> take the pass. <laughs> and then the other two presenters from all over New York um, will be um, teaching those kids. Um, and I'm so excited for that. And then the last thing um, that my main focus is is um, content design. I've been working on a lot of flyers and new stickers and just kind of um, enriching the brand of. Um, Utah Lake and what we want it to look like to the public. Um, and I'm taking lots and lots of pictures. The other day we went on a lake tour and I saw um, lots of, we actually saw five great parents, which is really cool. And um, yesterday we saw my four sample cranes. And it's really neat. And um, I think that's everything. Any questions? So Anna, um, I follow you on social media, and I just would encourage everybody, because they need a following, <laughs> and we want them to have a big following, that's correct. So uh, why don't you tell us your Instagram handle? Oh yeah, we're just at Utah Lake on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, I think we're in Utah Lake Authority. You've done some fun things and great photos, and your, your question asks are a lot of fun, so thank you for your work, we're excited to work. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to 5.3, events, engagement, operations, and staff will take this one, please. So we have a slight change. Uh, so I just want to introduce Heather as our newest hire. So you're seeing we're expanding our staff a little bit. Luckily, you're going to hear less of me at the board meetings because I won't be wearing as many hats. Um, but Heather uh, is our new um, events and programs coordinator. So she's going to talk on some of our events and engagements she's been taking over um, as we split these students out. And then I'll hit on our operations and recreation. Thanks, Sam. It's just so nice to meet everyone. Um, like you said, my name is Heather. Um, I am from Utah, originally from St. George, but I'm happy to be here, Utah Lake Authority. Um, yeah, so our first big event, um, we have some like plantings coming up this next month, but our big event that's coming up is Compatible with Care. That's going to be May 18th. Um, we have a meeting set up with Kim um, tomorrow, so we're able to get all that all set up and starting the permits, make sure that's ready to go. And then um, Utah Lake Festival will be June 8th um, from 10 to 2. We also have a meeting set up with the committee um, for April 8th to get all those little kinks worked out so we can get that event ready. And I've also started on some sponsorship programs. So I've come up with um, two different ones, um, a private one that's more just kind of, um, or like a like lower sponsorship and then like a public package and just like help, like also different options for people to donate because we're just grateful for whatever they're willing to contribute uh, and hope that we can uh, make a difference. Thank you. But any questions? Okay. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Okay. All right. We'll move on to our next item, which is the executive director report, and this will be presented by Will Real quick, Mayor. Sorry, we had to split up that last agenda item between oh, our okay. and myself. Um, so I want to speak a little bit on operations and recreation today, um, but first I wanted to just give a thanks to our, our staff, especially Anna and Heather, who are two newest hires. Um, we can't thank them enough for everything they've been doing. They've accomplished a lot of great work. And I told them both that they're apparently one good luck charms because we took them to visit all the access points the other day, and we saw, as she mentioned, five great blue herons in one day. I've seen two great blue herons at Utah Lake in the last seven years I've worked here. So five in one day is an accomplishment. So we're going to keep them really close, and hopefully that light continues to spread on a variety of items. Um, but we're really excited to have on our two staff and thank them for their efforts. Um, a couple of points I just wanted to hit on really quick for the board. The first being um, our Access Points Enhancement Project. So there's a picture on the screen here. This is a shot of the access point on the west side of the lake that's called Mile Post 13, or sometimes it's called Lucida Acres. Um, this project was four of our what are commonly called sportsman access points because it's primarily used for waterfowl hunting, 
for fishing, for bird watching. <clears throat> that was uh, mile post 13, um, most, uh, sorry, you'll see that, uh, Mulberry Beach, Sweet Lane, and Mill Race, all four of them, we hired a contractor to basically smooth out the roads, bring a new road base and make these roads accessible again. A couple of them were pretty, in pretty poor condition. Mulberry Beach was almost inaccessible because it was such a steep drop off of the shoulder of the road that people couldn't access these spots at the lake. So that's wrapping up right now. We're in the final steps of the contractor. So just wanted to highlight, we're really excited to see that. We were even getting a lot of good feedback from people online. We've been posting these photos. They're very excited to see that they can get down to the lake again. Um, these other items I won't hit on specifically wanted to mention. We'll be talking about this in our work session today that um, our staff's been diligently working on developing some new policies and procedures um, and enhancing those uh, employee handbook, um, establishing a better procurement policy, setting up a variety of committees and work groups that we can work forward on. And then, as I mentioned already, we've been working on hiring some new staff to help us in excelling in the role that we carry that's so important in carrying the lake. Last thing I want to hit on, just a quick shout out, something that's new this year. This is not one of our events, but we are sponsoring the event. It's a park bow fishing tournament in Tully. If you haven't heard of bow fishing, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're using a bow and arrow on a fishing line to actually shoot and harvest fish. Um, carp is a topic that I think Addie might be talking about a little bit today. That's actually where she is, is a media event for this event. Uh, she's trying to help spread the awareness around the importance of removing the carp and the work that's being done there. So this is the Utah Bow Fishing Association, reached out to Division of Wildlife Resources, our agency, and a couple of others to host I think this is the first time in 10 years. I think they said 2014 was their last uh, bow fishing tournament at Utah Lake. That's going to happen on April 27th and 28th at Lincoln Beach, the county marina on the south end of the lake. And conservatively, talking with people who know a lot more about park removal than I do, our, our hope is to try and harvest somewhere between 80 and 100,000 pounds of park in these two days, which would be quite an accomplishment. And these bow fishermen uh, are quite confident that they can do that. So they're excited to get together to have a great contest set up. And they're going sheerly off of the quantity. So nobody's waiting around trying to find a big one to bring in. They're trying to bring in as many as they can in the boats. So these are two-man crews. They go out all day. It runs on Saturday, I think, from 9 to 5, Sunday from 8 to 2. And they're just pulling in as many as they can. So we're happy to help with that. We've been working with the Division of Wildlife Resources and others to coordinate dumpsters for collecting these fish. Um, they'll be taken to the landfill. I actually had somebody saying, like, well, that sounds like kind of waste. Turns out it actually helps with uh, biodegradation for the other um, biodegradable materials in the landfill as well. So we're really excited to have that happening. Um, we do have information on our social media about it um, that people can, they're still looking for more teams. I think they have 30 something teams right now, and they're hoping to hit somewhere around 75. So a really fun event. They're excited to participate in it. And we think it's a great outreach opportunity for the public to continue to raise awareness on the importance of managing. That's all I got to on today. Was there anything, any comments or questions before? Yeah, who's sponsoring the prizes for that? So it's kind of a, a variety of things. I think Al Sporting Goods potentially is sponsoring some of it. Um, the Bow Fishing Association went out to over, I think they over a dozen <laughs> sponsors that are private. And then our public entities were handling the costs of the disposal of the fish and also helping secure volunteers for them. It's a great idea. Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I have to clear my calendar, but what, what is the winner? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. You know, right? <laughs> What's the big prize? What can I win? He said this something year. about, he's got a variety of prizes, including a couple that are, oh, he said over a $1,000 value. I don't remember the variety, there's a variety of fishing and, and boating prizes that he secured from donors. So it sounds like a pretty cool event. We're excited to help him. I don't know, Mike, I might, I might be a little competition for you on that. <laughs> no camera. That you can see in our day. It's too bad to you. We're ready. They're going to be like, they're going. Real quick, Sam, can you talk a little bit about what the, the disposition of the carp is? And how are those being disposed of? Are they being used as some fertilizer regeneration process, yeah. or, or is this really just get them out of the way? Sure. So, more broadly speaking, the June Sector Program and the others that have helped with that have, have used a variety of methods over the years, um, including, I think, someone out to uh, a dairy farm nearby to help with fertilizing. Um, they sent it to the meat farms in the area that's feed in the past. With this tournament, I mean, trying to set it up and also with it being such an unknown, we opted to go for a direct solution of providing roll off dumpsters and taking it to the landfill and then benefiting uh, those biodegradables, as I mentioned, the landfill for this event. In the future, we've also talked about other options where, you know, if a landowner wants to be able to use some, we coordinate in advance where, you know, some could be dropped off and they can come pick some up. 
so that there could be other benefits and uses. But primarily the goal is let's test it out, see how well the event works, and see what we can do on this run. Thank you. So I have a combo fishing multiple times my boys down on the Cobra River, and they are so excited about this, and they get so mad at people are also boat fishing part and don't take care of them and, and get rid of them the right way because there's an appropriate way you're supposed to do it. And um, I just, it's in fact, they did it once and I was in the backyard weeding and in the little grandkids kitty pool, all of a sudden there was a carp <laughs> swimming one day with a boat through it. And I just thought, you guys are in so much trouble. <laughs> but they do love it. It is a really fun sport. I mean, the energy when they pull those bows back and see these huge fish, it just, they go crazy. So it's a lot of fun. All right, let's go ahead then and move on to our executive director report. And that will be by our director, Luke Peterson. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, and I'm excited to finally give my, my first report. Um, most of my activities, the first couple of months in the job have been around listening. So I've been on a, a listening tour trying to understand as many different perspectives as I can about the lake. Um, and I, I, uh, yesterday I got crazy and decided to count the meetings. Um, so here's a little summary of what I've been up to. Um, I've had a number of great meetings with uh, representatives from the state government, um, talking about all kinds of things, how we can cooperate together on trails, uh, in the future of dealing with harmful algal blooms, you name it. I've met with uh, 38 nonprofits, residents, and sort of independent experts of different varieties. Um, I'm really focused, and I, I want to make sure that we do a good job working well with partner or organizations. And there are a lot of great nonprofits that are working in the conservation field. And I think we can do a lot to, uh, to work collaboratively with them. And so it's been very important to me uh, through this process. And then of course, getting the perspective from the real experts um, when it comes to science at the lake, um, talking with scientists, academics who work in this field. Um, I think I've spoken with people from just about every institution of higher education in Utah. Uh, a lot of faculty from UVU, USU, BYU in particular, and um, glean a lot from their various areas of expertise, whether that be park mitigation or uh, um, water quality. And then um, on the federal side, met with a number of federal agencies that are all deal with water, uh, but then also had a great visit with our congressional delegation. I flew out with Steve Anderson from UVU, and uh, we met with um, the entire Utah congressional delegation. We're glad that they could fit us into one marathon day <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago, and um, just had some great conversations with them regarding the, uh, the request that UVU is making for the Nature Center, and then of course we're supporting them on and uh, our own request that we're working on related to recreation. Um, so that was a great visit. And then of course we have a legislative session and we're grateful to uh, legislators who've done good work. Dave mentioned the, uh, the repeal of the lake restoration enabling legislation, which we're really happy to see. Thanks uh, to Senator McKellen for spearheading that. And, um, and also other pieces that are that are very pertinent to the lake, including uh, this uh, lake study that was sponsored by uh, Senator Bramble, <clears throat> which um, we're collaborating with uh, FFSL to develop the RFP for that. So it was a great legislative session, great conversations, and a lot of a lot of good uh, I think has come out of that. Excellent. I want to talk briefly here about some of my goals. I've got 
Several of them that I'd like to see us achieve over the next year, or at least make some significant headway on. Um, I'm not going to feature all of them today, just in the interest of time. And I think some of them are more relevant today, and some of them more relevant to topics we'll be covering in our next governing board meeting. But I want to highlight just a few. Um, Sam talked about the infrastructure access enhancements that we recently completed, and I'm really excited about those. We went to them beforehand and after. It's an, ama an amazing improvement that's been made. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, we're, we're really excited to see that progress being made. Um, but beyond that, also, for, uh, what, what Jake was talking about, I really want to see what our forward in a big way this year. And I know there are a lot of moving pieces, but I, I feel uh, that if we commit energy to it and we um, engage in it with uh, the, the sort of open, honest dialogue that we've had so far, and with our common goals in mind, I think we can make a lot of great progress. Um, briefly, uh, on legislative, we our, our big um, push this year is going to be on the development of the Nature Center, which will be in Hudson. We're very excited about it. Um, obviously, there are a lot of pieces in play with that, but um, we intend to meet with all the Utah County legislators. Um, and the members of the Natural Resources Committees, both the House and Senate, and uh, legislators who touch Utah Lake, whose districts touch Utah Lake, um, who fall outside of Utah County, because that, they, they, we have some in Salt Lake County, we have down in San Pete. Um, the lake is big and it has a big reach, um, but the hope is to really start to have productive conversations that we can report with our, our goals um, for, for the Nature Center and for the lake moving forward this year. Next one, please. And then lastly, and this is something we'll be dealing with in our, our work session, is transparency. Um, I really want to see Utah Lake, the Utah Lake Authority, be a model for transparent government. I think that um, we've done a lot of work. I'm, have terrific staff. I'm grateful for all the work they've done, uh, particularly Sam, in um, updating our bylaws and updating our policies and procedures. And I think that we can really do a lot to attain that level of transparency and um, really build trust with the public um, that lasts us for years to come. I think there are a lot of ways that we can go about that. Um, one thing that isn't in our policies that I am going to be instituting, I've experimented a little bit with recently, but um, I'm going to have a public calendar moving forward so that people can just go on the website, schedule a time to meet with me, do a virtual meet, um, so that any member of the public who has a question, comment, concern can, can get in touch with me uh, and go ahead and schedule a meeting directly on the calendar. But I think there are a lot of things that we can do here. And um, I would be missed if I didn't mention all the good conversations that went into the work we've done on transparency. Those 143 meetings were just been fun of it, right? We received a lot of good feedback from people like Jake, uh, from members of the community, from board members, from uh, Congressman Curtis and others. And all of that has fed into the work that we're going to be doing uh, around making QLA a model for, for transparency. So those are the three I wanted to highlight uh, today, but uh, happy to answer any questions that you have. I didn't pay attention, but was the Linden Center funded this session? No, no, it wasn't at this session. So um, the goal is to work first on a federal appropriation for it. So you is working with uh, Congressman Curtis on that. And then uh, we will, through a combination of private funding and a request to the legislature next session, hopefully fund the rest. And our big hope is to be able to have it done in 26. So at one point, I was told we were on a short list at the state for funding for that building. Right. 
Would that change? Yeah, so the dynamics around the building itself changed. It was originally USU that we were doing, right? And then um, it was recognized that UVU really gets in UVU's backyard. So it switched to a UVU request. So the, it had been at one point a totally different project. Now it's been sort of re-envisioned and moving forward as a as a UV project. Great, thanks. Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, we're really excited about this here in London City, but we see this as a regional, strategically regional site, not just for the city or even the county, but for the entire state. Um, it's really a collaboration. You know, London City is donating the ground where the where the site will be. We see this as a science center for UVU um, to work on different aspects of the ecology and water at the lake. So they'll have labs there, as well as offices for the Utah Lake Authority, as well as a four-acre conservation park yeah. there to interact with the wetlands. So a place where school children can come for field trips, the public can use it. It's going to uh, also tie into some of the historical uh, elements that this was the former Geneva Park Resort from pioneer times until mid last century. So just a recreational, but also science education, you know, center. So. Yeah, thank you. And we really appreciate your obviously uh, contribution donating the, the land for the space and park and everything involved. Um, and I think it's worth noting that it will be a lab also for the other institutions in higher education in the state. So not just UVU will have lab space there uh, to um, where USU or whoever faculty from all over the state can come and study the lake. It'll be great. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? I, I just wanted to say thank you. I've got a visit. We visited south of the lake, south Utah County, and so forth. And, and I know probably in his role, he probably gets more criticism and praise. But I want to say, give him a little bit of praise and say thank you, because I think his outreach, he did cover a wide base and a wide variety and uh, a lot of um, stakeholders. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure to visit the south end, my homeland. <laughs> No, Chair, if I may. Um, Luca, thank you, first of all. I appreciate the organization of, yep. of these topics and goals, some of the outreach and efforts that you've done. Okay, this report and it's very well organized. So let me throw you a softball. What, what is the biggest thing that we as a board can do to help you with some of the things you've identified through this? So next steps, how can we engage to help you be a board? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, we are going to, I think in some of the work session items that we're about to discuss, there will be plenty of room for, for some assistance. So uh, I would almost say right away, I've got some work for you uh, on that on that front in terms of working through the policies that back up transparency, um, as well as some of the things that we're doing to on some of the items I didn't mention on here, but in terms of our ability to retain and strengthen the skills of our terrific staff and um, in various other areas. So I think there's a lot to do, and as well as some of our discussion items around mitigation and so forth, I, I, I have work for you. Yes. Perfect. So I, I mean, I'll just throw that out there. You have a board for a reason. Yep. Um, there, this is too much for one individual and any one full team to lift on this with their own. Um, so as you identify your next steps, please engage with your board in various aspects. And we've done all these meetings. Um, frankly, it would have been nice for us to sit in on some of those as well. And sure. Maybe that's an opportunity for you to get your feet on the So moving forward, if you have a future follow-up or a certain group or constituent, yeah. um, the more we know, the more we engage, the better we can help understand and execute that vision along with you. I mean, this is this is the Utah Lake. It is the statewide effort. As like yeah. I said, this is a regional asset, not not any one city. So I, I just encourage you to please engage us as we move forward. Happy to do it. Sounds great. Uh, play more meetings to come. So, well, 
Okay. The, the new bylaws doesn't violate the statute anyway. 
not that I can see, no. Okay. Does that satisfy your question, Council Okay. Were there any other questions on the bylaws at all? Okay, so at the end, I should clarify, we're planning on having an actual vote on these items afterwards in our item 8 on the agenda. So I'm happy to take any comments, but we'll do the motions to approve. Um, for policies and procedures. So we, we passed the policies and procedures at our January meeting. Um, we've been working diligently to try and set up the various guiding documents that we need to help our staff and afford a good guidance and operate in good faith with the public. We needed to make some updates. Um, so again, lots of minor changes in formatting and things like that, changing the uh, proper terms. Um, but some of the, the only, um, I would say, significant changes in the existing policies that we did pass one is our procurement section, and I won't go through each individual change um, because uh, I would describe it as that entire section is now 80% different. The reason being is we met with the Division of State Purchasing afterwards and had them review our procurement policy, and they helped us to improve it to match more closely with state standard. Um, obviously, each city and county and state agency can have their own, but we chose to try and operate uh, with what's the industry standard for the state agencies. So we updated the vocabulary that we use, we updated the types of procurement so that it's matching with how the state does it. Um, so there are requests for quotes, there's requests for um, statement of qualifications, invitation to bid, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel confident after having to review it uh, three different times, I went through iterations with them. Um, they're satisfied with it, they're procurement officer and then was pleased with what we put together. Um, so unless there was a specific concern or question the board member had around procurement, I can move on to the other changes. Okay. Um, the only other change in the existing, um, uh, Councilwoman Linda Mill had brought to my attention in the grants policy, which if you'll pardon me a moment to get down there. <laughs> Oh, my apologies. One other change, our privacy policy. Again, we met with the state auditor's office. Their version was over privacy policies for state agencies and ours was slightly inaccurate. So the changes in there are matching the template that they provided us that is compliant with state code for the privacy policy for our website. So again, that was um, a state agency providing that input for us to be able to improve that. Um, Hopefully, we're making anybody dizzy with all the scroll. <laughs> Sam, I do have a question on the Please, please go right ahead. That's maybe not procurement, but um, I looked through this the other day and I had a hard time finding something. Maybe I just missed it because it's 68 pages. Mm -hmm. um, where do we have in here protections um, or not protections, but uh, oversight for the ULA staff or executive director making commitments on behalf of ULA or the board, financial or otherwise, without board oversight or approval. Yeah, so we actually do have that in the policy just a moment. I'll be speaking on that. And then we also have a procedure set up that I'll be training you all on as well on agenda item 604. All right. Thank, thank you. you. I don't know if that was part of the care. No, I really appreciate you asking. Um, sorry, so back to my comments about Councilwoman Lindy Miller just pointed out we need some clarification that grant dollars being awarded by the director will be previously approved by the board. So I just want to circle back to let everyone know that we implemented that change. And then we did have several new policies that we implemented, um, first of which transparency to Councilman Karn's concern. I um, appreciated uh, Luke's comment that there was a lot of great input both from the residents and um, concerned citizens uh, as well as board members. That created uh, that the result was this policy. So it, at first, this dictates that the purpose is that we're striving to be transparent in all of our policies and procedures, and then it provides some specific guidance around um, compliance that will comply with all of the um, Utah Transparency Laws and Regulations, uh, the Open Public Meetings Act, the Government Records and Access Management Act, um, all of the fiscal and transparency reporting, and other things that are dictated by the state. And then it jumps. Uh, it does speak as well specifically to delegation of authority. And we have a paragraph in there that explains that all board members, including the chair, vice chair, the executive director, and all staff will act only within the authority granted by our state statute, 11 65, our bylaws or policies or resolution as applicable. 
And then uh, as far as communications and approval of documents, to Councilman Farm's question, it mentioned specifically that our staff will make reasonable efforts to communicate with board members with sufficient need or notice for needed action. So for instance, with this meeting, we determined with the amount of documents you're reviewing, we provide a two weeks notice instead of just the, the standard one week we've been doing um, And we want to ensure that board members feel informed and are able to respond to questions or concerns of their constituents. So then specifically on doc, oh, sorry, yeah. 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 yes. So I'm setting this board meeting. Mm -hmm. Does the chair do that, or do you communicate with the chair who sets this meeting and okay the agenda? Great question. Great question. So I don't know if we put. I don't think agendas are specified on here, but in our bylaws, it does specify the process. Um, going from memory because it might take a minute to find it in there. Um, so the meeting schedule is approved by the board at the final meeting of the year for the coming calendar year. So in our meeting in November, I believe it is, we'll approve the next year's schedule. Um, and then adjustments are made as needed with such a scheduling concern. Sometimes there's a conference that most of our board attends as we'll try and reschedule when needed. As far as an agenda, the drafting begins with our staff, and then we meet with the chair and or vice chair and review the agenda. Um, in the bylaws, it specifies that any board member can add an item to an agenda. And I, I believe, uh, again, I can verify the statute and send it to you, but I believe it states in the bylaws that within the last week before the meeting, we can't take anything back off of the agenda. Um, but there is the option to be able to table something or prepare on a topic afterwards. Um, so it does pretty specifically say in the bylaws how the agenda can be formed and then approved to be able to come to the meeting for the discussion. Does that answer your question? Okay. And if I can mean, speak to that, we always meet before, like we met yesterday for over an hour and walk through the agenda just to make sure that they felt good about it, we felt good about it. And so, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe yes. a, what will the process be if board members wanted to have something put in the agenda? If I remember correctly, I think in the bylaws it just specifies sending it to the executive director. And then again, I, I'd be happy if somebody put that in for me. We'll, we'll send that out to the board to refresh and we'll remember what that process is. I appreciate you raising um, on the next section under transparency, so the, the, the policy that we wanted to hit on the most. I appreciate you bearing with me as we're reading through it. Um, the approval of documents, so Councilman Carnes, a uh, question he raised, there was an issue um, with our previous director where some felt that um, there was some mistakes made in the opinion of some. Um, frankly, we didn't have a policy like this out. So we wanted to establish a policy and a process to make sure that the board was involved and that we were being transparent when we do things like write letters of support for projects or other things that are out there. So in this section of the document, it actually details in this, this table here, the document type, the approval that is needed for it, and the duration for review. So the first one listed there is a letter of support. And as we've designed the policy, it's the approval needs that we need to notify board members when it is available for board members to review. If no comments or edits are received, proceed with the signing. And the duration for review is listed as 24 hours. Um, that also then details each example out, so it specifies for policies, that means board review and has to be approved in a public meeting, it needs seven days of notice, if there's significant edits, additional notice if possible. Basically the same thing applies for policies, bylaws, um, the budget, um, contracts is available to board member upon request, that's um, allowed within our bylaws to be able to review and have our attorney review contracts and proceed with those. Um, resolutions provided to the board review and improvement public meeting, again, seven days. Um, RFPs are posted publicly on the state purchasing website and reviewed by the state division of purchasing. Um, they're publicly available, posted for a minimum of seven days for compliance with the statute. Um, the executive director hiring process, we wanted to specifically call out that that is a process document and any edits are approved by the board. They approved the current rendition and we'll be uh, revising that in the future. And that has seven days notice as well. Um, job postings will be publicly made available, as well as an effort to post them on social media and other sources. Um, staff positions are posted until filled. The executive director posting would be three weeks, which is what the board approved about the last time we did this hiring process. And then press releases as well. We wanted to make sure we were transparent on those and looped in our board. So typical press releases, the chair or vice chair will be notified via email when it is sent out um, as being needed by the executive director. For instance, if it's on a sensitive topic or we need to make sure that um, agreements have been signed, um, the executive director, chair, vice chair will have 48 hours to provide input on that. 
Um, otherwise, it would just be sent out and include a written email to be aware that we're reaching out to the media, for instance, about the, the carpo fishing tournament. Probably not something Eric Kafusi needs to spend valuable time reviewing, so she'd be included on a press release. I might be on a team, so yeah. <laughs> here I am. You can even advantage <laughs> <laughs> um, But those are the documents we specifically wanted to call out that are our most common documents that we have previously utilized. Um, and the process allowing for the board to provide input on that. Um, I am 6.4. When we get to that, I will explain exactly how the board will be notified of that and have the opportunity to comment on that. But is there any question around that particular section? Is that right? Subject to transparency policy. Yes. Is there at least is there a uh, policy or procedure where we get uh, legal advice to make sure we're in the legal respect? Is that to in the policy that obviously you have a legal review or an um, attorney or how do we make sure that everything we do is passed the, or the legal test and i know you don't want to go overboard because you can sure hire a way expensive attorney so I, I don't know that we i don't think we have anything oh please go ahead i was gonna say i think uh, the way we envision this particular table is with regard to how the board interacts with it. But we can specify when the time starts we're going to move forward to call up um, and to get a review. Generally speaking, it's anything logical. So we can move the you know, contracts, anything that may have some legal ramifications. We have a meeting, we send it on to her, we get her feedback, but we can certainly specify it, I think. Mm -hmm. Mayor Caboose, can I make a general comment? Yes. Something to be something to be aware of. This last legislative session, um, Bill and Rand, the representative of Rand, the independent entities under 154. Um, I think the Italian authority just needs to be aware that as a state, we are we are we're not concerned about the Italian authority, we're concerned about independent entities in general and the risks that they pose to the state of Utah. Um, we've identified in that legislation 22 independent entities. Uh, we're trying to make we're to create independent entities. Frankly, we're not doing a very good job at that. Mm -hmm. But we do have a, there's going to be a toolkit and a full review that's going to happen through our legislative management committee with our auditors. And I'm just going to give you, I'm going to give you just an oversight of what we're looking at. I think it's helpful for this group. Obviously, the attorney here will look at this. And at some point, the Italian authority will get a review through the legislature with all of our independent entities. But things we're going to look at public purpose. Uh, we're going to look at the proximity to or independence from the state, the government structure, financial risk and controls, the oversight structure, and exem exemptions from state policy and procedure. This is going to be an ongoing project for the state in general. Um, Utility authority will get wrapped up in this as an independent entity, but just, just watch this. Um, there is a really good toolkit for independent entities that the Legislative Auditor's Office has developed with the group each and um, and uh, just just watch that issue because as you develop this out, there's going to be some resources and tools that will come down from the state. That's so helpful, the senator, and it'll make it so that we're all on our toes and paying attention because we want our people to be good stewards of this money and and really show the state that how full of gratitude we are that they have funded us. And we're going to be the example for all the different entities because we we have we have 22 that are identified. But the Italian authority is going to be the example. Like, we, come in, we come into a fresh group where we need to build this out in a way that is done right right from the start. So just just look look for that, look for that toolkit because I think it'll be helpful as you build these policies out. Thank you so much, Dale. We appreciate that. And that bill is on our list. We've been reviewing amongst a couple that are applicable for this session. So thank you for raising that point. Um, the next policy that we have on there. Um, Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing those thoughts. That's standard. Um, we added an education assistance policy. This is something that we, um, we've mentioned previous in the emails out to the board that we wanted to add as a benefit to our staff. So um, this policy and also in the handbook will go over the education assistance plan. Basically, we took these from other, um, I believe actually pulled them from one of the universities here in the state. So I'm mirroring best practices on how this policy and the, and the education assistance plan will be fit in um, in order to provide that as a benefit to our staff. Um, so it goes over the purpose of the policy, eligibility, how it's approved, and it all needs to run through this very detailed process in order to be able to offer that in keeping with those best practices. 
Was there any particular section or a question from the board at all about the education assistance policy or plan specifically? Okay. Um, another policy that we added in was um, surplus and obsolete equipment disposal policy. Um, we have some older equipment in the office and we wanted to make sure that we were establishing what's an acceptable policy and procedure for following for disposal of surplus equipment. Um, so it dictates in here um, on how what, what needs to be sold or what can be donated according to this policy. And uh, the, the executive director has to be involved in that decision so that there's oversight and then what happens to that equipment um, and where it ends up. Um, it also specifies that it's we're should be following governing priorities of protecting our employees against compromising situations in that disposal, um, optimizing our returns. So there's an opportunity to be able to resell that equipment um, or otherwise being able to uh, conduct it in a fair and public manner. And it is as simple a manner for the agency as possible so that we're not tied down trying to get rid of you know a printer from 2002 that nobody wants anyway. <laughs> um, but so that, that policy was added on as well. Um, with the procedures specifying it, and that is all of the additional policies that were written into the document. Were there any other comments on policies or procedures before I continue with the employee handbook? This is really helpful. Um, when they sent it to me, I sent it through my HR department and legal, and just really thankful that you were allowing us to have some input and, and get eyes on it. I'm sorry for the long emails that kept coming back <laughs> with corrections and suggestions. But again, I just wanted to get the best practices in place for this. So it feels like a fresh restart, like Senator McHale said. For sure. Thank you, Mary. Um, let me jump over then to the employee handbook. Um, the first, uh, most of you probably noticed the first 40 or so pages are very standard template. Um, was provided to us by Teamworks HR, which is our HR and payroll company that we work through. So those were pretty basic. Um, we did make a couple of edits based on the suggestion we received from Bubble City that um, because their template was boilerplate for private and public entities that we needed to update. Um, so we made a couple of those minor changes, but nothing significant to discuss. And then the addendums were customized additions to this. So it goes through everything around the medical plan that's offered, dental, the retirement, um, it goes through the various types of leave, um, that we offer to our employees. Uh, those are the paid holidays that we offer. Um, a variety of pretty standard human resource type things that need to be included. Um, so I'll jump past most of those unless somebody has a particular concern so I can hit on a couple of the specific additions we had. Um, so feel free to raise a hand or shame on me if I'm talking stuff. Um, we did specifically need to include to be compliant with state statutes a overtime compensation election agreement, which basically just allows our employees, if they do end up working overtime, obviously in our policy it states we encourage them not to work overtime, but if that occurs, they can elect to receive um, compensatory vacation time in lieu of cash overtime pay, and that's according to state statute with their guidance and input on that. Um, we also added in a specifically sexual harassment policy, a substance abuse policy, um, you know, so is private and public overtime and uh, rules the same for state statute? Are they the same? They actually are different. Yeah. So we, we met with uh, our teamwork department and from there did some research on the actual state statutes. And so we developed ours based on what state statute is and also compliant with the uh, Fair Labor Standards Act. But, but public and private, do they have separate rules or are they the same? They are separate. If I remember correctly, they don't think private entities, or excuse me, private business, they don't think can do uh, compensatory time for overtime. They're only allowed to pay overtime, if I remember correctly. And public entities in Utah specifically are allowed to do so within the constraints of the FLSA. So we, we actually designed ours a little bit more conservatively. I think FLSA allows, I think it's up to 240 hours of compensatory time. And we're only allowing 100 hours for our employees because, again, we want to encourage employees to not work overtime. We want a good work life balance for our staff. Does that roll over? Uh, the compensatory time specifically? It does from year to year, yes. Um, but they can't exceed that 100. So they don't get like a new. Okay. Uh, so they get a new jacket next year. Yeah. No, they it's roll over 100 hours. What happens if they work overtime? Uh, so, so the one hours they're paid specifically each payable for how many hours they were to work beyond that, if that were to occur. And in our handbook or our policies and procedures, who determines if they are allowed to 
the staff's allowed time off. Time off or time off, like if they want to use that's so what they're doing. If they have the hours of vacation, they can expect the funding. That job's not being done at that point. Mm -hmm. So who's approving the time off? So that all runs through the executive director. He has to approve any time off that we take. So they potentially could get 100 hours of compensatory time and not get it approved. For instance, I would assume not be able to take 100 hours all at one time. For instance, I, I doubt that would be something that would probably be good. Sure. Unless there were some other extenuating yeah. circumstances. There's nothing for the holes in the policy. So. True. Yeah. I just, I'm not sure if this is your question, but in order to approve the compensatory overtime in the first place, they have to have that approval. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't surprise any of us, right? If you're, yeah, if you're working over sure. there because you have my approval and then yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking down the road with the case where an employee and the executive director may not get along that well, but they've got all this extra overtime and they don't ever get approved, and then they're really getting nothing. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> I you make a great point, Chris. I'd be happy to add it online that just well, states if there's a disagreement that the chair can mediate that. Yeah, I'm just you know, and I'm looking at the hypothetical of weird sure. situation, right? No, we agree, and that's why we wanted to do this. I'm my day job too. It's a company, and I try and find all these holes in our policies. So, sure, and, and maybe it might be helpful actually if we were to state instead of just specifically around this example, we can add a sentence into the employee handbook that states on any matters of policy, if there's a concern between an employee and the director, that they can go to the chair that might be to ensure that concern. There is also a spot where they can go. In regards to human resources, I think go directly to the HR company that's specified in there. Mm -hmm. But about policy, the HR company is not going to know as much. So I think it would be good if we added something like that. I appreciate this. Discussion. Okay. Um, a couple other policies, pretty standard. We added a driving safety policy. Um, we do have employees utilize their own personal vehicles. We don't have any agency vehicles currently, so we want to get some guidance on that. And then um, we also added the education assistance plan. So this provides very comparable information to the policy itself. There's no conflicting information. Um, but under the IRS code, in order for the education assistance to qualify to be tax exempt, instead of looking like additional income, we have to have an education plan and a policy. There are separate documents that provide guidance on how that money is, is awarded to employees. Who's funding the education assistance plan? Does it come out of ULA budget or state budget? ULA budget. It is ULA budget. Yes. Okay. So it's in the, in the draft 20, uh, fiscal year 25 budget. Okay. I believe after that, I think that's our last. Oh, um, we do have the dependent and then one that you saw. It's just an acknowledgement of company property. So this just helps track, you know, we provide a laptop to our staff that that's recorded on paper so we can secure that again if they were to leave the agency. So that's just a standardized form. So that's everything in uh, that's everything in the policy and procedures manual for updates on that. Were there any questions from board members? On that, I really appreciate all the comments and the input. You've done some great work and the beauty of, uh, yeah, a lot of work and the beauty of trying to navigate this and, and get best practices policy is we can always come back and change. So just keep that in mind. And if you run across something that you think, okay, this can be better, let's bring it to the board and let's change it. And we plan also to have a review period for these documents so that even if something doesn't come up in the meantime, but we are going actively through and updating to be for best practices. So that's all I have on the first three agenda items. Chair, if it's okay with you, I can go right to 6.4. Okay, great. Um, this is, uh, so there is a program, or not program, excuse me, a project management tool that's called Airtable. And it is an online interface that our staff is using to improve our efficiency and tracking a variety of things, uh, whether that's grant opportunities, the funding secure, the projects that are going on at the lake, a variety of things. But the example I want to show you that you see on your screen is this is what's called a base within Airtable. We've named it the ULA Board Hub. So the way this works, you can see several documents that we're reviewing, and I should probably make the screen a little bit bigger. Make that a little bit more visible. Um, so all the board members after today's meeting will receive an email that has a link and also has a password to access this screen. So just a reminder to the board, this screen is intended to be draft documents that are protected. So that's why we're doing 
and then direct the link to you with a password to protect these because they're not approved and not ready for public consumption. So I put in the example for the documents that we're looking at today, the employee handbook, the policy and procedures updates, the bylaws, and then the committees and working proposal. So the way this will work is it basically looks like an Excel spreadsheet. So there are several columns. It tells you what the document is. It tells you the type of document. So we have several categories um, that specify if it's a budget, a bylaw, a contract, a letter of support, a policy, a press release, a resolution, an RFP, et cetera, to help you understand what the document is. Then it specifies when your review period will be. So this is in compliance with the policy. So if a letter of support were posted today, it would be listed that it can be reviewed. It needs to be reviewed by tomorrow, April 4th at 10.22 a.m. So it specifies how much time you have to review it. Any notes that we may have on the document you need to be aware of. It specifies whether it's open for review or will also, once it's, that review period is closed, it will indicate that it's been closed for review, meaning it's been published, approved at a board meeting, sent out to the news, et cetera. Then most importantly, you have the URL link. So in here, this document itself, this spreadsheet, you will not be able to edit. It'll be view only, but you can click on the link to open the document, and those will be in um, uh, review mode. So you can make redline edits and or comments to a document to let us know if you want to see a change in the document. And that helps us track not only what changes may be proposed, but also who's making the suggestions. And then it also specifies for you to know who created this. Now, I know this is not how it says. This is not who created the document, but who created the row in the spreadsheet. So who added this document? More likely than not, it's just going to be Luke's name or my name here. And then we also, for data purposes so that you can confirm, we also created, the, um, it tracks when we created that row and when we last modified that row. So this way you can see, okay, we are actually providing 24 hours. We're not saying 24 hours, but we only posted it two hours ago. We're giving you that full time period or the week or whatever the numbers may be. So it tracks when we created the row and upload that document. And if we made a change, if we had a new version of the document or um, edits were submitted by board members, it will specify if we changed anything in that row in this call where it says last modified. So again, now that you understand what that looks like, the process is according to our policy, the time frames. This would also be a, a usable for our board meeting, the documents we were approving today. You'll be able to come back to this same resource again instead of, oh crap, I gotta go find which email Sam sent me that PDF in. You're gonna be able to come directly to one resource and find the documents that are up for approval currently and be able to provide those comments within the time period that's allotted for those. And I'll have some instructions in that email to remind you, hopefully, even on a YouTube video just to help refresh what Airtable looks like. But again, it'll have that link that you can just save or bookmark in your, your browser and return to that link each time. One thing I, I almost forgot to mention, I actually have it set up so that every time we add a new document, it will automatically send you all an email with that link again to make it even easier. I apologize, I forgot that earlier. But it will notify you, hey, Sam Brager, Luke Peterson added an item to that table, click here to view the item. And it will pull up and you can look at and find that link and click that document to be able to view those documents. Are there any questions right now on that process? So when does it, like if we put in edit, when do those, or do they get added? How does that work? So those would be reviewed by the staff and then handled probably outside of this method of communication or probably an email back up to the board. Um, or again, if we were to update the link, which if we're editing the document, it won't automatically do that. But if we make some other kind of change, it will notify you again. So either via the automated emails or directly through some kind of follow-up from the director or myself, you would be notified if there were a change to what is there. Um, if it's just the document is good to go, there's no changes requested, the only notification will be if we, I believe, hmm, I know it notifies you when we add new rows. I don't think right now it notifies you if we change information. So I'll go back and check. Um, but the direction will be in the email to the board either today or tomorrow. Um, but either way, you would make sure if there was a change to the document, you would know. When you sign back in, this column right here, if this document has been reviewed, it'll be changed to close and actually will move down. So they're grouped according to open for review and close. That way you'll know any documents in the close section, those are final documents. And those have either been sent out or been approved in a board meeting. Um, eventually, the closed documents will be pulled off of there just to keep the 
bit of a patient being too busy. Um, but that's how it will specify so that you're aware of the status of a document that's in the state. So when they're pulled off stem, then they'll go onto our website, like the handbook, right? If they're public documents, they'll go on the website or it's actually as it goes out to the reason. Mm -hmm. so, there's a couple of comments. Can that might have just answered my question. So this is intended to be the project management tool, not the archive or repository of all policies. All yes, this is the working tool. Once yes. they're finalized, formalized, the document is complete, and then move it to like the website or to the relevant location. And we do try and upload as much as we can to our website and also the public notice website for the statutes. But um, for instance, our policies and procedures and our bylaws, once these are approved today, those will be on our, bed, our website and the public available page for review. So yes, this is a gen for drafting the process of getting boards of so, so each board member has a log in and you need to pass it. We actually simplified it. So there is not a lot of work. It's the same link for all board members and the same password. We'll make sure it's very simple to remember. Um, but we wanted to make sure because they are means that they are protected appropriately. But the training involved in getting an account set up and remembering how to sign and everything we felt wasn't needed at this point. There is an option where we can go that direction if we request it. And there's a way to set up a sign in for each board member. You would, you would each get an invite, you would set up your account, and that is how you would access it instead. Currently, it's just a meeting link with a password on the document. So it attracts who comments? So not in this document. When you go to edit a document, so if there's a Word document press release, when you make a comment, it'll say on there for us. It'll let us know. Although it may say yes, but we may need to have a board member say, you know, Mark Larson, here's my question of concern. Um, the red line will tie it back to that. Um, so we, and again, to Mayor Kafusi's comments earlier, we can always improve and refine these processes as we move forward. But yes, on this bare table, it will not let us know who's viewing it. That's why I reminded the board that this is a protected document and the drafts, and it will be protected, so please don't share them to the public or anybody that's not on the board. But documents themselves, you can make comments on which our staff can review. And then once documents are approved, they'll be published in whatever manner is available for review at that point. Any other questions? Yeah, well, this, I is tool, Sam. this is URL web based. Is there an app for this tool? There is. You can actually look at it on your phone. So if you download Airtable and you open the link in your email on your phone, it should kick you to the app to be able to do that. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions from the board on it? Okay, thank you for your patience on that. As I mentioned, the 6.1, 2, and 3 will have action items to actually approve those. Um, but I'll turn it over to Luke for 6.5. All right, we want to talk about the magic of mitigation. All right, it's it's a big challenge um, that we have worked on various points um, as the commission and as the authority. Um, in order to do, do any sort of work around the lake that impacts wetlands, the Army Corps of Engineers requires that you uh, compensate for that uh, by developing wetland, enhancing wetland somewhere else. Uh, and as a result, you get what are called mitigation credits. Okay. And um, I, we have been on a, on a quest to build what, what's called a mitigation bank um, that would allow us to effectively bank a number of credits uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers, but it is an involved process, as the board knows. So uh, I spelled this thing after Choose Your Own Adventure book because uh, I'm odd that way. I don't know. You'll get used to my sense of humor. The staff are working on it. But the idea being that we have a few options, okay? Uh, there are choices that we need to make, and I would love to have uh, the board's input, and I, I don't know that we will get to a conclusion today, and that's fine, but I wanted to sort of introduce to you at least the paths that we have to take. So the path that we have been working on is a mitigation bank, a chunk of land that would be purchased that would be turned into wetland or wetland ought to be further enhanced so that we could get these credits. One of the challenges with this is that it puts us into 
a set of fair, fairly technical fields. We have to get good at um, acquiring land, acquiring water rights. We have to get good at the actual process of mitigation or else we have to find a really good contractor that we trust to do the mitigation process. And um, as we, as, as an organization we have discovered, um, it is difficult to do those first two steps, to find good land that's going to work well, that meets the Army Corps of Engineers criteria, uh, that will allow us to complete trails, complete things like the Wakara Way project, and to complete that whole trail circuit around the lake. So uh, the bank as an option is the direction that we've headed in so far. And we've also encountered a lot of problems. So I want us to talk a little bit about how we might address that. The option that I put here called all in is where we really go all in. We decide, yes, we are in the mitigation business. We hire staff who their job is to find land, find water, that is their area of expertise, whether that's um, on a permanent basis or temporary basis, a contract or what have you. But one way or another, we get really, really serious about the acquisition of land. We, um, we have to deal with this both as a short-term and a long-term project. Um, I've spoken extensively with Ben Steyerman about this, who's not here today, but um, Ben will be the first to tell you that those Army Corps of Engineering credits are tricky. The, um, if you buy a land with the assumption that you're going to be able to get the credits from it, and you get an initial sort of payout in terms of credits, but in order to get it all, you have to get that sign off from the Army Corps of Engineers, which can take many years. So going all in, I see as very much a long-term commitment in my mind, right? We have to really sort of build uh, capacity internally on the mitigation, on the land acquisition, all that sort of thing in order to do it. The, uh, another option is that we develop more of a partnership model. So we focus more on operating in partnership with nonprofits that specialize in doing similar work. This would be Nature Conservancy, Utah Open Lands, organizations that spend a lot of time in this area. That's definitely an option. I think it's one that could help mitigate costs, require us to build less of this unique specialization internally. And um, as I said before, it makes us utilize strengths that are already out there. I am not a big believer that we need to read in every wheel, but it does require work, right? It's not, it's not a, a, an easy button. It will definitely require that we Develop the right sort of relationship contractually and, and interpersonally with the organization or organizations that we work with. And then the last item on here is the elusive B and Lou option, which um, was discussed a few years ago in the legislature. Um, uh, Casey Snyder was sort of the person behind it. The idea here is effectively create a program that allows for organizations like us to go and buy those mitigation credits. And uh, you have somebody else who's really expert, has the expertise and does the mitigation work involved. USGS was commissioned to study it as a, as a possibility. They offered a favorable report. I don't actually know what happened from that point on. We don't currently have enabling legislation that allows us to do this. So at the very least, it would require us to go to the legislature and figure out whether there's an appetite for this and how we could work on it. But I think it is something that could, could definitely help us in the long term, right? If, and not just us, anybody else who has to do similar work, whether it's at Utah Lake, Great Salt Lake, um, it's certainly an option. So we have a lot of paths in front of us. And my fear has been, I do not want us to commit long-term based on immediate things that, that jump out at us, right? Um, we need mitigation credits for Wakara Way in order to complete that project and whatever the next piece will be. 
but I do not want us to be doing things on a purely ad hoc. Uh, I've got a, I've got something I deal with right now. Let's go out, let's find some land, let's mitigate it. I think we need to have sort of a strategic vision as far as where we go. I think conservation and uh, development of wetlands around Utah Lake, that's a great thing. And I definitely think we support it and the development thereof. But the how is really an important question for us. So I want to at least get us talking about this as we uh, internally as a staff, this is the one thing that I at least once a week turn to Sam and go, how are we gonna, how are we gonna do this? Uh, because I think it is one of our biggest challenges. We don't have uh, clarity as far as what is the big picture? Where are we going when it comes to mitigation? Is it something that the board feels that Utah Lake Authority should do internally as part of its mission? Is it something we should promote by working with other partners? Should we, we be working with policymakers to create something like a PMU program that would be helpful, or maybe some other path that I did not include in the great mitigation adventure. We've been talking more today than I ever have. This meeting, I'm getting tired of it. So. Um, where is your partnership in municipalities and counties around the lake in this? So, as an example, it's there was very good technology for line. We do a lot of Shore work. Yeah. Some of it's in partnership with ULA using ULA grant funding. Yes. And we have to do mitigation work that benefits those projects that are ULA partially funded. Yeah. But I don't see that here being captured. Yeah, go ahead. Just one point to clarify, uh, Mr. Karn. So far, anything that the ULA has funded, to your comment, has not actually been funded from the Utah Lake Authority. Okay. Um, it's been the Utah Lake Authority working with uh, the county commission to get tourism tax dollars. Um, it's a funding source for a variety of people to apply for, and also legislative appropriations. So our agency hasn't directly funded a project yet um, in partnership with any of the cities. We did recently start our small grants program, so that right. situation may arise with that because we do have um, both Saratoga Vineyard received grants under that. Neither of those are mitigation project related currently. Uh, but but also don't think it's a it's arisen yet. Okay, I, I guess where I get confused is ULC and previously in ULA will use those projects as these are the things we're doing mm -hmm. around the lake. But we're not direct, but ULA is not directly funding them. I'm, I'm just trying to follow this. Sure. Right? So we hang around as a building. Yeah. But we're not really, but you're just facilitating the funding, not actually providing the funding. Correct. Yeah. I think there are a variety of areas where, um, <laughs> I'm Sam, feel free to jump in because you've actually been here for these things. But I think there are a variety of areas, right? Or we're one partner among many or multiple on any given thing. I think to answer your broader question, though, know, when I talk partnerships, I think that's definitely a factor in this, right? I'm not saying specifically we've got to go work with Utah Open Land. I think there are a variety of ways that we could come up with a partnership model that was maybe county based mm -hmm. um, that would allow us to achieve our goals. It's just, again, I think we would have to commit to let's figure, let's pick that path and then let's develop what that looks like. So, I mean, look, if I may, essentially everything that we do is in partnership. Right? We don't own any land. We don't own the access points. Our role as a commission is collaboration, facilitation, strategic input. I mean, that is the goal. We are to improve the lake quality. Um, and so, yes, maybe we need to elevate the promotion of those partners, uh, but by no means are we claiming that this is all us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely sure. everything we do is in partnership. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how ULA can help take credit for the mitigation work that we've done. <laughs> <laughs> we are just, I mean, ULA is involved and we're heading, and a lot of mitigation work is being done today. Um, that you don't necessarily we don't necessarily have to touch, but it is being done in yeah. in the name of improving the lake. Sure. Yeah. And I think there are I think there are ways that we can look at 
that as part of the partnership model. Um, they're again Army Corps of Engineers. They're very particular. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. And so a lot of it comes. They will get down to who is it that pulled the permit, and that's who will get the credits. Um, we had a cease and desist for three foot by three foot piece of area. Yeah, I, we've been doing it with them. Let me jump in. Um, I, I just listened to Cameron. I, we've got a. I think the partnership model is what works for me. I mean, I'm thinking logistically. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna fix what car away with mitigation. Where does it come from? And I, I think like for me naturally where I'm at, I've got the Benjamin Slough. I know the Benjamin Slough is currently owned by the Army Corps of Engineers. It's gonna be taken over by the state and transferred. But I know they'd love nothing more than to expand the Benjamin Slough with private private landholders. I, I mean, that's like the, the perfect perfect model where you help facilitate that get, get in between. I mean, for me, I, I think through the logistics of that, that, that's where you jump in and, and negotiate that as, as a partner. Obviously, you wouldn't hold any of the land, but you would help facilitate it to help other personally. And I, I think a lot should do. Yeah. yeah. Other thoughts? Can I have a comment from online? Uh, uh, Representative Brady Grant texted me a question or just asking if the ULA was good at this, would cities be able to purchase mitigation credits when developed? Uh, so, I mean, I guess in theory, if we were effectively the, if you think about it in a way, that would make us the Fee and Lou organization for the county. Um, and I think that is an option, that's a possibility. Uh, it would it would involve, I think, a pretty significant ramp up in terms of the resources that we have within ULA dedicated to that. Um, but yeah, I, in theory, yes. Any other virtual or live in person questions? I think I agree with some of the other comments here. I think the first step, since you're asking for some feedback, yes. is to leverage relationships or assets through our partnerships versus creating another cost within the ULA to hire someone to do this. I think we have some potential advantages. Um, to Chris's point, popped in my mind what we're doing at the Linden site as well. There's mitigation, conservation um, efforts going to be made there to improve that site. And certainly, I don't know that, you know, it's not something the ULA will own, um, but it's a collaboration that maybe we could investigate if that yeah. works. Definitely. Thank you. I think this is, this is helpful for me. Um, it's just kind of been me, not yelling, but uh, directing my angst. At, at Sam on this question up to this point. So um, I would probably continue the conversation with you as a board, but I'd like to, I, I hear some direction. I'm gonna pursue that in some conversations if that works from here. Okay. Thanks everybody. All right, let's go ahead. Are you staying up there, Luke? Because now it's committees and workshops. You, you asked me to take this one off. That's oh, okay, Sam. Nice. Um, and I'll make it this brief. I know we're running low on time. We've got 15 minutes left. Here. We're a lot we have 14 minutes. Thank you for granting the audience. We're not going to minute over. Um, let's see if I can okay, perfect. share the screen. So, again, a lot of great input from people on trying to guide how we can work better and more transparent manner and continue to secure additional feedback from others. I'll try and go through this. Oh, we're still in presentation. So online see, online is good, but these people up here cannot see lecture. Stop presenting in PowerPoint. Click on the PowerPoint screen. And then there you go. Now it's there you go. Thank you. Now we're good. Um, okay, um, there's a lot of detail we could dive into this. I don't know if that's required at this point. Today, what we'd like the board's approval on when we get to item eight is the broad structure of the committees and their purposes. 
And then whether it's in the meeting today or if you would like to send us an email afterwards, if the board has anybody they would like to nominate to participate in one of these work groups. Um, we met and talked in depth through this idea with Chair Kavusi, um, and we really appreciated her suggestion to allow for those nominations. Um, the final makeup of the board would be up to the executive director and the staff member that's overseeing that. For instance, our vegetation work group, um, Addie as our biologist will be overseeing that, so she'll have that time to say with her familiarity is who's going to know best on those topics and can best inform that. But we would like the board to have the opportunity, if there's somebody in particular you're aware of that's interested in participating on one of those, that you can send a, a nomination to our executive director. So today I'm not going to go through all of these tabs. The other tabs that specify these talk about potential options for seeding these committees. Today what we're looking for is the committee, the purpose, and also to brief you on the timing. There are several committees listed on here. We are required by our statute to have a, few, have a few of these. So when you reviewed that, it did specify which of these committees fulfill that statute um, and also which others are voluntary or help us with accomplishing the management plan. So the first is an advisory committee to broadly advise the board on topics or questions that the board or staff are seeking input on um, that initiates from the board, not the committee itself. The committee's not gonna be creating its own work. That will come from the board or the staff if there's a topic like mitigation bank or things like community outreach or trail development. If there's something the board wants the advisory committee to look into, this is intended to be membership made up from um, natural resource managers and experts, but also there are some seats that are open that could be citizen involved on this committee too. Um, the rest, oh, yeah, happy to. So then the others are specific to those statutes. Um, we utilize a couple of existing groups because we don't want to create committees just to have committees. So there are a couple of existing groups that we'll be able to utilize potentially for these. And then we created several work groups to help around the main topics of the lake, vegetation, wildlife, water quality, water levels, et cetera. So then in that document, it gave you the purpose. And then I'll just close with, um, right now we plan on launching one, two, three, four of these this month, a few more this summer, one this fall, and the rest in future years as those needs arise. And then according to the implementation timeline that we have in our management plan. So I'm happy to discuss this more in the future. These can be flexible in how we design them in the future. I think even without a need for another board approval, um, but the committees themselves, the names that we put before you, we would need to have uh, approved in the action that is in eight. Are there any questions from the board about the committees or work groups that we propose? So what's the deadline to get names to you for those first four committees? We don't have a set deadline. I think afterwards, probably Luke and I can draft an email specifically to the board on this and explain for which committees, which we're meeting right now, versus in the future, we would do another email really to the future cool. committees. And I thank you for listening to all my whining about getting public comment committees. I can appreciate it. <laughs> We appreciate the input. So, so, so on, on the committee, so yeah, they can be private individuals within that category. So I believe the only committee that we have just like a, a resident availability is on the advisory committee because primarily these groups are centered around specific technical topics. And if there happens to be a resident that qualifies for that, their the board member could nominate them. So, but I suspect that, for instance, the Fisheries and Wildlife Group, that's an existing DWR committee and work group that they've set up, or our vegetation working group, Addie, will work with forestry fire and state lands um, and other partners who work on frag mines and other vegetation to pull from their expertise on those committees. So, so I was thinking on your agricultural producer work group, you have to do that. Sure, maybe. So, so that one we don't have a membership established yet because we don't actually project starting that until I believe 2028. And that's just matching up with our management implementation plan. Um, that topic is a future topic, but we wanted to have an overall proposal of here's the current needs that we foresee to develop committees or work groups around for the agency. So yes, there would be a future discussion about that group where we could we could um, niche in on that specifically. Did I was there somebody else in the board that had a comment? Okay, so that could be approved in the final section, but I want to make sure we're out of time for Luke. You've got 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Mayor Kibbutz is going to correct me here, probably some nine. But to talk about the. I just wish a little bit, just to get us out on time. So I'll we'll be willing to come back next time. But... Yeah, so um, you all received the draft budget. I don't think that there's a lot for me to go through beyond it. I'm happy to respond to beyond the, the, the 
commentary that I provided with the email on sent it out. Um, I will just say to give a broad brush, this is where I feel we're going budget-wise next year, is that my focus is, is really on um, making sure that we are getting done the planning tasks that we have to do, the laying the groundwork in order to take uh, some of the bigger things, the steps towards bigger things we want to do. So 2025 is a big year for planning, for uh, uh, collecting data. So a lot of money is going to go into consulting services specifically um, as we as we flesh out those things. But that's kind of the big picture of it. Happy to reply. Yeah, happy to reply to uh, any questions you have about it. I know I spent a long time with Luke yesterday walking through this, and and by the time I asked all the questions, I felt good to, as to where we're at. This is our first official year of utilizing the budget to its capacity since we're new to this. Okay. We can, yeah, I'll double check. Yeah. Also, if you find a question or concern, feel free to email it into them. <laughs> we will discuss this again in the next session. Yeah, so, so just to refresh the board memory, this is just closing the tentative budget. So it will be an action to approve, but the final budget will be approved in the May meeting. So there is opportunity to make additional edits. We may have some changes as we're gathering more data. The accounting services, for instance, we're still waiting on a couple of quotes to figure out what that needs to be. So there might be a few minor changes, which we would report. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. So, and we all understand because if you're in a municipality, we're all in budget season, which is feels like it never ends. So we understand that this will be the tentative budget, not the official budget that we will eventually um, accept for our first acceptance. Okay, we'll move to item number eight, which is action items. There's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, we can make a motion for each one of them, or I will entertain a motion for all five. I have one question. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned earlier that you will be the chair on those issues. Is that included, or are we Thank, thank you, Shane. I can answer that question. I apologize. So I actually took notes. I wanted to refresh for the board what the two suggestions were. So for the policies and procedures, um, including language that when needed, ULA staff will consult with legal counsel on topics pertaining to legal or sensitive matters. And then the second was that if a disagreement on policy or procedures arises between the executive director and staff, they can contact the chair to media solution. Those are the only two edits that I can remember. So yes, we would include that in. Yeah. That, thanks for catching that. Okay, I move to approve action item 81 through 85 with any uh, edits suggested during the board meeting today. We have a motion on the table. I'll need a second. Mayor Larson seconds. All right. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call it to a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. You guys are amazing. Thank There's you. Me, Mary, we have four minutes left. Addie was able to make it. Addie, yeah. welcome. Yeah. There you are. Stand up and let's hear your presentation. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Well, thank you all for your patience. I was in a hands-on interview for hard boat fishing, which I could have gone into. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for being patient. So We've been working on a lot of projects lately, doing a lot of planning and uh, grant applications. So we're so excited for this spring and summer. I know I am. We have a lot of things going on. So I've been talking about our planning party series for a few months now, and it's really coming to fruition now. We have ooh, three scheduled for the end of the month, and we have seven events scheduled total so far. And that's a mix of um, agencies and like private parties, even like Young women's church groups. So we're really excited to get the community involved in that. Um, and then last year, some of you may remember that I applied for the Utah Online Contact Program and I received grants. So I just submitted that again. Um, and so I'm really excited to kind of continue that project. And then we are also looking to apply for um, some ECHLS funding. 
do kind of further our community project in our planting parties that we've been having. Um, and that's just to supply more plants, um, more supplies, volunteers, kind of things like that. And then um, also continue building on this greenhouse we've been partnering with EPA for. We're very excited for that. Um, and then recently we have, we partnered with um, Provo Delta Waterfowl, their chapter, and we're put in a ton of nesting platforms for ducks. And we think we put eight in, so there's 40 total, but we're looking to get 60 by next year. So we're really excited for those to be used. Um, it's an area that is got a lot of habitat for ducks that isn't necessarily useful. So we're excited to put that artificial habitat in to hopefully see their populations continue to rise for not only viewers, but also recreators. And, and then we've also been doing a lot of education and engagement improvements kind of with our community events. Um, but also partnering with a lot of people um, in our natural resource world. So that includes like DWQ, uh, Utah County Stormwater Coalition, and the uh, Provo River Watershed Council in order to start a stormwater seminar kind of initiative this summer. They've been doing one up in the um, Beaver Valley, but we're excited to move it down into Utah County a little bit more where it's so prevalent with like agriculture and our Utah like, water quality studies. So we're excited to get more people educated that way. And then we're also partnering um, with um, iNaturalist, and um, it's this huge worldwide event that's hosted every year um, in order to collect citizen science data. So that's going to be through it. They're called the City Nature Challenge. It's over like a few days in the end of April where you basically host events for citizens to go out and collect data. And it's pretty exciting and just easy to get the community involved. So we're excited to do that at the end of the month as well. And then kind of lastly, we've been working towards, I don't know if we talked about this at all, but um, about getting some interns this year. So I'll be having um, a GIS intern in order to kind of help us build a good mapping kind of library for us. Um, so we can this with the teacher I have there. Um, so we can increase our inventory for people who have questions and kind of improve like our existing website um, maps. So we're excited for that. Um, and then also at the end of the month, we have our carpool fishing tournament that I am so excited to go to. Um, it's going to be very action packed and hopefully we get a lot of carp and a lot of sports in there involved. So we're very excited. So I think that's all we're done and I will not be ready longer. Because I should be having a graphic uh, of the boat fishing that we can post. Yeah, I have, a, I have a poster, it's like a little yellow yeah, poster thing that I can send out before after this and stuff. It's got like event details and everything. So yeah, we can forward that to you for sure. Any other questions for me? That was great. Okay, great. Thank you for thank you. Thank you. All right. So, with that said, we do not have a closed session. Our next ULA board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, May 15th, 2024, at 9 a.m. And this will be held down at our Provo Airport. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to dismiss. Motion made, Marty Larson. That's it? Second. Second. All right, good. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you when we got out right at exactly 11 o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, let's do it.